Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and RedDesignTactives.com. Well, we got a fun one for you today. We've got a call to action type box there. And in the bottom of it, it's got a button. And every four seconds, the buttons are going to bounce up and down. Really attention grabbing. If that's happening on your site, it's going to get people's eyes on it pretty quickly, which is exactly what you want with a call to action. Really easy to do. Let me take you through it. So here we have our site. And if we look down here, I'm sure you've noticed it already. We've got a little button right here. Every few seconds, it's bouncing up and down. And that's going to attract attention pretty quickly, which is just exactly what you want with a call to action button. Of course, when they hover over it, it's going to stop and they can click on it and you can send them wherever it is you want to send them. Take your mouse back off of it again. It's going to start back up bouncing again. Really easy to do. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the visual builder. And let's go down. Well, I'm going to delete this button right here. Okay, well, I've got a row here, the green tab. I've got two columns in my row. Obviously, you can put this button anywhere and anyhow you want. In my right-hand column here, I've got a little call to action with a title, a bit of text there. I've got a purple background in the actual column there. That's why it's purple. Well, I'm going to add the button so it appears like it's all in one call to action there. So I'm going to click on the call to action. I'm going to hit the dark little button with a white plus sign. I'm going to add a new module. Funnily enough, I'm going to use a button module. But whatever it is you want your button to stay. And underneath, obviously, is where you want to put the link to where you want to take people with your button. Now, I'm just going to put a hashtag in there for a placeholder as I've got no real place to take people. Always best practice, if you're linking to your own site, open it in the same window. If you're linking off-site to somebody else's site, open it in a new tab. That way your site's going to stay open. Okay, we want to style this button up a bit more so it's uh, more in keeping with the rest of the site, but that's entirely up to you. So I'm going to go to design. Alignment-wise, I want my button to be in the middle. I'm going to go down to the actual button itself. I'm going to flip the little switch, say use custom styles for button. Button text size is OK. I'm going to change it to white. I'm going to ch change my background to a red color. And when they hover over it, I'm going to have it turn blue. And this is common to all Divi modules. If you hover over the dark writing within a module, you'll see some little icons appear. If there's a little arrow there, there is in our case, click on it, it'll give you two tabs. Desktop, so when the mouse is not on it, want it to be a red background. If we click on the hover tab, obviously when the mouse is on it, I'm going to change that to blue. That's great. I don't particularly want any border on mine, so I'm going to take that down to zero. Let's flip this back to its own desktop red mode right there. I'm going to make mine a little pill-shaped button by giving it a high border radius. Small one will give you slightly rounded corners. If I put in 10, it'll be slightly bigger as you can see. If I put in a big value, something like 50, it's going to be pill shaped, which is what I want for mine today. Okay, I'm going to push this down just a little bit. It's a little close to my text there. So still in the design tab, I'm going to roll down to margin. Oh, and incidentally, when you hover over it, We've got a little icon there. If you want the icon, great. You can choose whatever icon you want here, and there's plenty of them. If you need to search through, hit the little breakout box. It'll pop out into a full version. And as they've teamed up with Font Awesome, there's a lot of scrolling to do there. I'm going to leave it just like it is. Or if you don't want an icon, you can switch that off right there. If you want it to be visible all the time, you can flip this button from yes to no. And as you can see, it's there all the time. I'm going to leave mine just as it was. That's absolutely fine for me today. Like I said, I just want to scoot it down a bit. So in spacing, I'm going to give it a bit of margin on the top. Try 50 pixels. I think that'll work for me today. Obviously, adjust yours to taste. 
great. Well, that's a great little button just on its own. But like I say, I want it to sort of bounce up and down and get people's attention. In fact, I think I'm going to turn that little icon off. So let's roll back up to our button. I showed you that where that was just now. If we roll down to where the icons are, I'm going to pop that one to off. Yeah, that works absolutely fine for me. Well, let's make this thing bounce. Okay, well, let's do a bit of CSS coding. Don't let that put you off. It's really easy to do. CSS coding is not scary. If you do something that you don't like, you can simply delete it and the site will go back to how it was. We're going to be using keyframes today. It's a bit like stock frame animation. You can have a timeline and make things do certain things along that timeline. And we're going to be building it with keyframes today. Really easy to do, as you'll see. Let's get back to it. To do this, we're going to go over to our advanced panel. We're going to go down to custom CSS. We're going to be using the freeform CSS tab right here, which allows us to write complex CSS down below, which is fantastic. So to target this button, all we need to write is selector. S-E-L-E-C-T-O-R. We can open and close some curly brackets now. And in between, we can tell it what we want it to do. Well, I want it to animate, so I'm going to say animation. Then I'm going to give our animation a name. I would call mine BNCE. Kind of my shorthand for bounce. I want it to last about four seconds for S. And I want it to keep going and going, so I'm going to say infinite. Fantastic. Put a little semicolon on the end just in case I want to add another line of code. Now we need to actually create this animation that we call BNCE. We're going to be using keyframes for this today. So I'm going to say at keyframes, K-E-Y-F-R-A-M-E-S. Then the name that we gave it, which is BNCE. We can now open and close some curly brackets and tell it exactly what we want it to animate, how we want it to animate. And this is like, as I mentioned earlier, this is like a timeline over our four seconds there. So at 0% or when the page loads, I don't want it to do anything. But I'm actually going to make this at different intervals up. So I'm going to put a comma in there. I'm going to say 0% and at 20%. Another comma and at 50%. And another comma at 80%. And one more, 100%. At these values, I don't want it to do anything, so I don't want it to be bouncing when it's at 0, 20, 50, 80, or 100. So I'm going to open and close some more curly brackets. We're going to use transform translate to do this, and I'm going to use the Y axis. So I'm going to say transform, colon, and it's translate. It's round brackets at the end there with no gap at all. I'm just going to put a zero in there initially, so it's not going to do anything at all. Great. Now let's copy this a couple of times. Control C to copy. I'm going to drop down within our curly brackets that are encapsulating the whole of our animation there. I'm going to paste this twice. I'm going to change one of them to 40%, basically the ones that are missing from above. And the next one, let's just pop it down a little bit. I'm going to change this one to 60%, which is missing above. And at these values, I'm going to have it actually move a bit. So I'm going to say minus 20 picks. And this one at 60%. We'll do minus 10 picks. And you can see it's actually wobbling the wrong way at the moment. That's fine because I'm, I want to translate around the Y axis, not the X axis. And you can change it. So I can put a capital Y in there. So it'll start bouncing the other way. Same for these right here see it happening already and you can mix and match if you want to we've now got our little bounce effect and that's happening over a four second period and it's going to keep going and going so it's going to bounce a little bit and it's going to stop it's going to bounce a little bit and it's going to stop if you want to speed it up you can make that smaller value that's two seconds if you want to slow it down obviously take it the other way 
But for me, my little four second one seemed to be working fine. So I'm going to change that back now. But when they put their mouse over it, I don't want it to bounce up and down like that. In this particular case, it's not too bad. They can still click on it. I actually want it to stop when they put their mouse on it. So what I can do is copy our top bit here, selector with the animation there. Control C to copy again. I'm going to go down below our keyframes bracket there. I'm going to pop that in right at the end of selector there with no gap. I'm going to put a colon and the word hover. And then for our animation, I'm going to put none. We've just created a hover effect. Right a little button there. So now when I hover over it, it's actually going to stop. Let's let it bounce. When I hover over, as you can see, it's stopping. If I take my mouse back off again, it's going to start back up. Perfect. Let's make sure it's going to work on the front end and we'll check it on tablet and mobile too. It works perfectly on those devices. Let's save the changes here. Save our page changes. And let's exit the Visual Builder. And here we have it. As you can see, the page is loaded. Every four seconds, it's going to go through that keyframe cycle. Perfect on desktop. Let's have a look on tablet and mobile. I'm going to hit my F12 key. I'm going to bring up my responsive devices. Here we are on an iPhone 12. Let's roll down and find that thing. Here it is. As you can see, it's bouncing up and down there. Let's have a look on an iPad. And then here we have it on an iPad. As you can see, it's doing the same thing there. Perfect. That there is a great little feature to have on your site. As I say, that's going to get people's attention really quickly. It's a bit like our buttons up here that we did the little spin effect with. Things like this happening really do get people's attention quickly. So if you've got something you want to get people to notice, that's going to do it right there. Awesome. Well, there we have it. There's how to create a bouncing call to action button. Really easy to do, as you can see, and a fantastic way of getting people's eyeballs on something. And that's just the thing if you've got a call to action button, because you want them to see it, you want them to click on it, and you want to take them where you want to take them. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please ring the bell, give it a thumbs up, comment, because it's always fantastic to hear from you share and subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you have enjoyed this today, want to learn a little bit more about CSS, it's a wonderful thing to learn. Have a look over here. In a moment, our simple CSS playlist should pop up and there's plenty of examples on there. Most of it, I've done it for you and you can copy and paste. But it is a really good idea to get in the habit of writing code. So once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.